we are now moving to bird strikes, combining the airframe and engine approach by Erdris Hansen and Regis Rosotto. Good morning, everyone. I am Erdris Hansen, VTOL Structures Expert and PCM, and... And Regis Rosotto, Engine Project Certification Manager. So today we will present you the MC uh, VTOL on bird strike, combining the airframe and lift and thrust system approaches. So if we, you wiki search bird strike, you will probably find this uh, very inspiring picture of the 90s. This is uh, Eugène Gilbert, and actually this picture is uh, um, describing Eugène Gilbert's uh, encounter with an eagle uh, while doing uh, the race between Paris to Madrid, and actually he's in the Pyrenees. Um, I'm sure I mean, you find it's a, a good and efficient manner to deal with bird threats. And um, I'm sure that the, the eagle size has been voluntarily increased to make the picture a bit more sensational compared to the size of the, the aircraft. So um, in the MCV, it will be more reasonable, we reassure you, and uh, will consider a likely bird impact. So today, VTOL uh, will probably uh, take off and, and land in urban environment. So take off, climb, part of the cruise, also descent and, and landing will, take, will be in urban environment. And therefore, they are more likely to encounter this kind of phenomena. and we want to ensure the survivability of a VTOL after impact with a bird. And we know that the front section of the fuselage is quite uh, very much impacted, like the windshield, for example, and the vulnerability of the windshield can endanger occupants. This is why it's a concern for us. So this is, again, a nice example of bird impact with a system flying around. And lift and stress system are very much integrated. So this is also a concern for us, and we'll make sure that impact with large bird and flock of birds will be well sustained and well handled. So today we have actually a very strange engine requirement, and the engine's performances are very much challenged. Um, you can see here an engine test, quite impressive. But this is to make sure that when our airplanes will encounter a small bird like this, basically the vehicle, the airplane, will keep flying and will keep functioning, particularly during critical f flight phases. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Just, um, just a few words to, to explain you where the bird strike is addressed in the special condition VTOL. So in fact, the bird strike is addressed in the, in the three paragraphs that are displayed here. So design and construction principle, where it's explicitly written that um, the aircraft must be designed to ensure that after the likely bird impact, the capability of the aircraft remains to conduct and then depends on the operation or control emergency landing for the basic category or the continuous flight and landing for the enhanced category. And you will find also two other paragraphs um, that are also useful for the bird strike. Uh, so the occupant physical environments, so the 2320. And also the last one, which is the 2400, which is dealing more with the least trust system installation, uh, where basically normally in other CS, uh, we have separate engine requirements for the bird strike. And here we'll, uh, we will try to, to show you a combined approach for the airframe and the lift trust systems. So this is a representation of uh, urban air mobility. Uh, urban air mobility is a major component of the future uh, of transportation in smart cities uh, in response of uh, uh, traffic congestion. So on this picture, you can see that our future VTOL will be operated in an um, environment where today we have conventional manned um, air airplane or aircraft or rotorcraft. Um, so Basically, uh, we have at ASEASA to ensure that uh, a, a level playing field between the VTOL requirement and the, the manned uh, requirement. 
the manned aircraft requirement. So if we try to map bird strike uh, with urban mobility, uh, we have learned a lot of uh, uh, lessons from the recent study on bird strike. So presence of bird strike generally decline of 32% every each 1,000 feet uh, in altitude above 500 feet uh, above ground level. Uh, generally, it's rare to encounter multiple bird strike under 2,500 feet. And most of the bird impact, particularly for watercraft, occur um, under 3,500 feet of altitude above ground level. So the remaining cases, uh, up to 8,000 feet, because this is a requirement uh, consideration, those are rare cases of impact. Sometimes this involves very large birds, but it's very rare. So the criteria, the main criteria that we are targeting in general is continuous safe flight and landing. So today we have four requ existing requirements on manned aircraft. The first one is actually applied on commuter aircraft where the windshield is requested to be uh, uh, bird strike resistant. And it has to be assessed with a 0.9 kilogram birds at uh, the flap extended speed. The rest of uh, the commuter uh, aircraft is absolutely not protected. So we have our DRCS 29 requirement that is actually uh, applied only on transportation rotorcraft. A uh, large rotorcraft is requesting to sustain a one kilogram bird at VH or VNA, whichever is lesser. And large airplane requirement is actually going higher in terms of bird weight, 1.8 kilos at VC or 0.85 VC, whichever is more critical. In parallel to that, we have for all types engine requirements, the CSE-800, which uh, uh, requests to tackle large birds and flock of birds. Um, ranging from 85 grams to 3.6 kilos. We have also CSP, the propeller requirement, dash 360, um, 60, sorry, 60 um, which is actually aligning the burst size on the airframe characteristic without exceeding 1.8 kilos. So what should we define for VTOLs among this variety of requirement? So for sure, we will ensure continuous safe flight and landing for VTOLs, but also control emergency landing for a basic category of seven to nine passengers. The criteria of altitude, no justification beyond 8,000 feet will be also kept. We will make sure that uh, the windshields are actually protected and reinforced. And basically on VTOL, we wish to have a bird strike resistant windshield. The one kilogram bird will be our target. We will align it on the uh, rotorcraft requirement because we consider that uh, they are likely to operate more like rotorcraft. And uh, this will be evaluated at the maximum VTOL speed. Of course, we, uh, we recommend to have a non-breakable windshield just to protect occupant and avoid uh, injuries. Uh, but this will be addressed in a different SCV toll requirement. And the novelty here is that we will exempt VTOL with maximum speed lower than 15 knots from uh, windshield justification. Uh, this is a lesson learned from the Iraq working group where actually we had no windshield penetration under, with, uh, for what, when, when the roadcraft was operated and, uh, um, with a speed lower than 15 knots. And of course, this is valid for conventional windshield and we expect that there will be no real novelty in, the, in design in this respect. So what will be done for the rest of the VTOL? Basically, we expect applicants will perform a comprehensive hazard analysis to evaluate exposed structures, system, equipment. So the target is to evaluate what is critical for continuous safe at landing. So we will evaluate the direct effect of bird impact and the objective it will be to make sure that there is no uh, failure, single failure catastrophic, of course, as presented by Emily previously, and that there is no loss of function due to shock loads. Let's assume that you have a bird impact. A shock load can actually uh, 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 kill a, a system, actually shut it down, and this is potentially a problem. Um, the second aspect that will be investigated is a uh, non-critical structure for continuous safe flight land landing or control emergency landing, but those structures, if they are damaged by a bird strike, they can 
actually have induced effects. For an example, a part detaching from a VTOL can actually uh, impact uh, all the critical surfaces or critical systems that are nearby. Um, and we, th there's a need to evaluate the trajectory of those uh, 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 part de de uh, departing from uh, uh, um, an initial location, the location of the first impact. The um, VTOLs are actually designed with redundant system and uh, we believe that it's necessary to evaluate those redundancies and because, for example, losing one redundant system will not be a problem, maybe, but actually the evaluation, global evaluation has to be done because often they are very much co-located. So the criteria that will be looked at is um, no induced effect catastrophic, no loss of functionality and no loss of redundancy resulting for either ingestion, uh, shock loads, or damage. So the bird strike assessment will uh, be requested for with a single bird of one kilo, uh, but also with flock of birds, particularly for the lift and stress system and redundant systems. So the bird strike assessment will be required uh, uh, at the speed corresponding to the critical uh, uh, configuration identified in the hazard analysis. And of course, uh, the evaluation will be done by tests in the absence of uh, analysis well correlated by representative tests. Because most of the VTOL applicants are new players in the uh, aviation industry, it is expected to perform uh, initial initially tests. Analysis might come in the future when there will be more experience built uh, from previous certification. Yeah, just um, just a slide to, to summarize again. Um, so basically, if we we have now this combined approach for the airframe and the lift thrust system for the engines, so what you will find is that uh, basically we want to tackle the large bird impacts and also the flocking birds uh, risk. So the airframe basically we look at the one kilo, uh, and for all redundant systems or lift thrust systems, you will have to deal with a large bird, one kilo, but also. Uh, to consider the flock uh, of birds impacting several systems. So what is important is really to keep in mind the no loss of function. It, that is really a common threat, uh, the bird impact. So we expect that you will not lose any function if you have a flocking bird impact on the, on the VTOL. And then some examples. Yes, so um, we, we wanted to illustrate a little bit this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, MC with some examples. You have here a redundant system that is a, um, a control system. So in general, for lift stress system and redundancy, we, we believe that it's important to address ingestion of large, major, or small birds, but also to address the effect of the impact of such uh, bird impacts on the lift and stress system and the redundancies as say, said previously. This is an example of a control surface that is actually ac activated by redundant actuators. So as you, you have seen previously, we will evaluate single large bird of one kilo and flock of birds which will encompass medium and small birds. A little animation to show that. Basically, this control surface will have to be evaluated to a one kilogram bird to make sure that after this impact, you don't lose totally the control surface. We will assume that it's critical for continuous safe flight and landing or control emergency landing. As a VTOL company, you will have also to evaluate uh, what is the consequence of uh, uh, the impact of a uh, uh, one kilogram bird on one of the redundant system. The evaluation might not need to perform a test to know that you will actually lose it, but you, you will have to ensure that after this event, if you lose one element of the redundancy, the VTOL will be able to continue flying and basically to sustain the loads and to be functional after the, the, such an impact. So continuous safe flight landing, control emergency landing, and no loss of function will be the criteria. We have also to consider flock of birds. And for this, in the MC VTOL, we have developed a, a kind of conservative approach, uh, considering um, what is a, a likely bird in, in a urban environment uh, of 450 grams. We believe that this will be about the, the weight of a, a, a big dove. Um, and to, this, this approach will assume that each redundant system is actually impacted with, with a bird of such a weight in a conservative manner. And 
this will set a, a sort of uh, a design condition, design level, to make sure that the system remains uh, functional after such an impact. Visually, you have it here. So no loss of function after the impact with a 450 gram bird, which is considered as a medium bird. Um, and this is, again, a conservative approach, but an easy scenario. An alternative is to go to the engine, so-called lifts and thrust system approach that is going to be presented by Regis. Yes, so um, another example which is based, um, so we, we, we wanted to propose as well what is um, today used in, uh, in the engine world, the, in, the, in the CAC 800 and in its AMC. Basically, uh, for those who are not familiar with CSC uh, requirements, um, the size uh, of the birds for the flocking birds uh, and the number of birds that you will have to shoot on your lift thrust system is really depending on the, normally on the air intake of the engine. And here we wanted to try to find a correlation that, we could, be, that could be used. And again, we look at the probability of one bird impacting several engines. Uh, so we took an example here of a, of a video that we found on the internet. Uh, and, and we look at the size uh, of the birds um, that are today uh, provided in the CSC 800. And so depending on the number of engines impacted by the birds, you can define uh, an impacted area or the frontal area that will be impacted by the birds. And then you can enter in your table here in, the, in this table, which is adapted from CSC. Um, so, depending on your number of Lystra system units, depending on the number of engines uh, that can be impacted, you can uh, decide to uh, address this number of birds and the size of birds that are provided in CSC table. So that's an alternative um, means uh, to the 450 grams that has been provided uh, just previously. Yeah, just, just to give you an example of, uh, of the air intake uh, size that we have normally on, uh, on conventional aircraft and rotorcraft. Uh, so basically here we are in the rotorcraft world and then commuter and large airplane. So we are at the conclusion. So basically, the MC CV 2250F on burst strike requirement will benefit from the, all the experience gathered so far on manned air, air, aircraft uh, certifications. And we try to tailor it uh, to VTOL specificities, including a consistent approach between the airframe and the lift stress system approaches. This last uh, chart is uh, uh, aiming at giving you a, the global picture of the bird strike, I would say, requirement and acceptable, uh, accepted means of compliance. So you have in the VTOL the uh, CVTOL 2250F uh, for on bird strike, and it will be associated to the MCS CVTOL 2250F, which has been already released to the EURICA in October 2019. By the way, I would like to thank all the participants who provided comment so far. Um, it will also be associated uh, to the SCV toll 2320A3 that will be released by January 2020. Uh, it, will, it will be more focused on windshield characteristics. And uh, it will be also associated to MCV toll, SCV toll 2400C, which is related to the lift and stress system. And this MC will make reference to the 2250F, the first one, and also to the MC. EHPS, Electric Hybrid Propulsion System, 290, because there will be a special condition, EHPS, uh, and Regis will provide you um, a presentation at 11 o'clock today on this topic. And this, this uh, special condition will cover a hybrid propulsion for all uh, um, types and will include uh, some consideration for a bird and hail strike adapted from uh, the CSE 800 in the MC EHPS 290. And in this MC, you will have all the details of the compliance demonstration for the engine or so-called lift and stress unit. Thank you for your attention.